Hello everyone, so today we're going to go over the second part of the Unit 3 practice test. Starting from question number 9, uh, going to number 16. Number 9. Given the function y is equal to 1 over 2x squared minus 8, uh, determine the equations of any vertical asymptotes. And then what are the domain and range of this function? So, vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is equal to 0 for this function. So uh, we can let 2x squared minus 8 equal to 0 and solve for x. So of course we can divide both sides by 2. So we just have x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Um, and then we have x squared is equal to 4 which means x is equal to plus or minus 2. So there are two vertical asymptotes, x equals 2, and also x equals to negative 2. And those are our vertical asymptotes. Okay, so the domain of this function is simply all real numbers except for the non-permissible values, that is to say positive and negative 2, since that will cause the denominator of the function to be equal to 0. Okay, the range would be easier to find if we had a graph to work with. Um, it is y is greater than 0, and then, or y is less than or equal to negative 1 over 8. Um, and we can examine how that works with a similar question, question number 12, in just a little bit. Question number 10. So here we are given a piecewise function. And we were asked to find the graph y equals to 1 over f of x. So the piecewise function was y equals f of x. And then we were to graph y equals to 1 over f of x and state any invariant points. So invariant points occur where the uh, y values of the original function were positive or negative 1 since the reciprocal of positive or negative 1 will also be uh, positive or negative 1 respectively. So here we have invariant points going from left to right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we have 5 invariant points. So the first invariant point had coordinates negative four and a half, negative one. The second invariant point had coordinates negative three and a half, positive one. Follow that up with negative two, one. And then zero, negative one. And finally, two and a half, negative one. Okay. So that's one of the things we will need to find in order to graph any function um, y equals one over f of x if we were given f of x. So invariant points, where once again, y is equal to positive or negative one. So from there, we can also look at where the original function had a y value of 0. So when x is equal to negative 4, y is equal to 0. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 0. And finally, when x is equal to 4, y was equal to 0. So at those three points, uh, sorry, for those three x values, 
um, the y values was zero, and so when we take the reciprocal, that will be undefined, and that causes these three vertical asymptotes. Okay, to complete the graph after finding the vertical asymptotes and the invariant points, what we need to look at are some of the key points here. So for example, moving from left to right, this point had a y-coordinate of negative 2, so its reciprocal will have a y-coordinate of negative 1 half. Again, similarly here, this point had a y-coordinate of 2, so its reciprocal will have a y-value of, sorry, of, of uh, the y-value was 2, so the reciprocal would be 1 half, and similarly here as well. Okay, so then that is to say the third step is to find out these local maximum or minimum points and to find their reciprocals of those y values and plot those on the graph. Okay. After that, consider the parts of the graph where the original function is approaching zero from either the positive or negative side. In this first case, circled is from the negative side. So if the graph is approaching zero from the negative side, that is then the reciprocals will approach negative infinity, since if a number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, its reciprocal will be larger and larger and larger, uh, in this case, negatively. So uh, since these values are getting smaller, the reciprocals will be getting larger, so we get a curve going this way. Next up, we have going from zero to, uh, sorry, one to zero. Again, the numbers are getting smaller, so the reciprocal gets larger, so it's gonna curve this way. Uh, same thing on the side as well. Again, the original function is moving towards 0 from 1, so the reciprocal will move towards infinity from 1 as well. And the last two parts here, very similar. Again, as we move from this invariant point towards um, the 0, the reciprocal gets uh, really large negatively, so that's how we have that shape. And similarly, same uh, same as this last part as well. Okay. So that's kind of the four steps to graphing reciprocals of functions, invariant points, vertical asymptotes, local maximum and minimum points, and then the behavior of the graph as it approaches zero from both the positive side and the negative side. Okay. Uh, so what else does this question have? All right, the domain and range of this function. So the domain of this function, notice that from the left-hand side, it starts at negative five. Okay. And then it goes to negative four. Um, however, uh, ne negative four is not a a permissible value of x, so we will use ram brackets there to exclude negative 4. And then from there, negative 4 to negative 1. Again, those two uh, boundary values are excluded because we have vertical asymptotes at negative 4 and negative 1 respectively. And then finally, negative 1 all the way up to uh, 4, but 4 is also excluded there as well because of the third vertical asymptote. So that's one way to write the domain in those three intervals. Alternatively, we can also write the domain as negative five to four, but x cannot be equal to negative four or uh, negative one. That's a maybe a simpler way of writing the domain. Okay, the range. Okay, so notice that this top half of the graph here has a minimum value of one half. So we have one half to infinity. And then here, both of these points are negative one half, and so 
you have negative one, sorry, negative infinity to negative one half. That's the other part of the range. Okay, so that's it for number 10. A rather complex question. Uh, but the idea continues to be the same for the, the rest of the reciprocal graph. So um, let's see if we can apply some of these ideas. So we are given the graph of y equals 3x plus 1 for number 11. And then we are to graph y equals to 1 over 3x plus 1. Sorry, y equals 3x plus 1 and the reciprocal y equals to 1 over 3x plus 1, right? Okay, so first things first, we have 3x plus 1 cannot be equal to 0 because it is in the denominator. So if we solve for x, 3x cannot be equal to negative 1, and x cannot be equal to negative 1 third. So that is our vertical asymptote right here, x equals to negative 1 third, caused by this non-permissible value of negative 1 third. So similar to the last question, we also want to find the invariant points here. Recall that invariant points are points where before and after a transformation, they, they, they stay the same. So 3x plus 1 equals to 1 over 3x plus 1 would be where um, we can find our invariant points, or at least the x-coordinates of, of the invariant points. Okay, so we will have in this case, 3x plus 1 squared is equal to 1. That means 3x plus 1 is equal to positive or negative 1. Okay, so that means we have 3x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 1. And finally, x is equal to then... Um, negative one-third plus or minus one-third. Which means either x is equal to zero or negative two over three. Okay. So from there, we can substitute these two x values into the original function. So we have y equals to three times zero plus one which gives us the point 0, 1 as one of the invariant points. And we can see that right here. 0, 1 is indeed in an invariant point on the graph. We can also substitute in negative 2 over 3. Okay, so that will give us uh, negative 2 plus 1, which of course is negative 1. So that gives us the coordinates of the second invariant point negative 2 over 3, negative 1, and we can see the coordinates can be applied here on the graph. Okay, from there, this part of the graph, again, very similar to before, notice that the original function was have y values between 0 and 1, so the reciprocal uh, as the y values got smaller, became greater, which explains this part. Similar to um, this part of the graph, when the y values were between 0 and negative 1, the reciprocals were negatively large. Now, as for this side here, and also on, on the left, um, as the y values get to be greater, both positive and negatively, the reciprocal will become smaller and approaching zero. So that's why the graph will start to uh, flatten along the x-axis. Now, it doesn't cross the x-axis or even touch the x-axis. It is a horizontal asymptote as x uh, approaches infinity from uh, both positive and negative infinity. Um, so we could add a horizontal asymptote going this way, and it would be appropriate to do so. Okay, so this would be the horizontal asymptote 
y equals 0. Okay. Which helps us answer the question, what is the domain of range of the graph? So the domain is simply uh, all x values except for the non-permissible values. So that is to say, uh, the domain would be x is not equal to negative 1 over 3. And the range is everything for, except for the uh, where the asymptote is. So just y cannot be 0. OK, so that's it for number 11. Let's move on to number 12. So here's the graph of y equals to 2x squared minus 2, and we're graphing y equals to 1 over 2x squared minus 2, and we're once again stating in the invariant points. So just like last question, the non-permissible value would be caused by the denominator becoming 0, so 2x squared minus 2 cannot be equal to 0. Uh, we can divide both sides by 2. So x squared minus 1 cannot be 0, so x squared cannot be equal to 1, so x cannot be equal to positive or negative 1. And once again, these two are our uh, vertical asymptote, x cannot be equal to negative 1 on the left, and x cannot be equal to uh, 1 on the right. Okay, so uh, second step, just like before, is to find the in, uh, invariant points. So we know that it's caused by 2x squared minus 2 being equal to 1 over uh, 2x squared minus 2. Let's go ahead and solve for x here. Okay, so we will have 2x squared minus 2 all squared is equal to 1, which means 2x squared minus 2 is equal to positive or negative 1. Uh, from there, we can have 2x squared is equal to 2 plus or minus 1. Um, so from here, we can go 2x squared is either equal to 3 or it is equal to negative 1. Sorry, not negative 1, uh, 1. Sorry about that. Right, 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, so then we can divide both sides by 2. So x squared is equal to 3 over 2. Or x squared is equal to 1 over 2. Which gives us uh, four different x coordinates for the invariant points. Either um, x is equal to positive or negative the square root of 3 over 2 or x is equal to positive or negative the square root of 1 half. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, draw those in. Okay. From there, if we substitute in, uh, let's say, the square root of 3 over 2 into this original function, then we'll get uh, 3 over 2 times 2, which is 3. 3 minus 2 gives us 1. So that is to say we have the coordinates of the invariant points being the square root of 3. Sorry about that. Square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 as the first invariant point. And the second invariant point will be negative and then the square root of 3 over 2, 1. Okay. If we substitute in uh, the square root of 1 half, then, then we will get 1 half times 2, uh, which is 1. 1 minus 2 gives us negative 1. So the third and fourth uh, invariant points would be uh, square root 1 half negative 1, and then the square root of negative 1 half, negative 1. So those are the four invariant points that we can see on the graph as well. Okay, so 
once again. Four invariant points. Now, if we were only asked to graph the reciprocal and not asked to find the invariant points, then we could have done so just graphically. However, now we know the exact coordinates of all four of these points, and that is, um, let's just go A, B, C, and D. So this was invariant point A, invariant point B, invariant point C, and invariant point D, respectively. Okay, so from there, uh, once again, just like before, uh, in the previous question, uh, moving from left to right, this part of the graph, um, the y values will increase without bound as we move towards the left, so the reciprocal will approach zero, hence this part. Uh, second piece is between uh, 0, 1 here, so between negative root 3 over root, sorry, the square root of um, 3 over 2, and negative 1. So since the y values are between 0 and 1, the reciprocal will be uh, large, and that's how we get this piece. Very similar to this part here, except for negative. Now what is interesting is uh, in between the points uh, C and D, we have this point, actually let me use a different color. So this point has coordinates 0, negative 2, and of course the reciprocal of negative 2 is negative 1 half. So this point has coordinates 0, negative 1 half in the reciprocal graph. And then we use the symmetry to draw the rest. Now um, once the sketch is completed, and we found the invariant points and the asymptotes. Note, we could also add, add in a horizontal asymptote just like before. Right, since y can not be equal to zero. Uh, for similar reasons to question number 11. So here the domain range, first off with domain, uh, simply cannot be equal to positive or negative 1. The range, y is greater than 0. Notice the uh, parts above the uh, x-axis. That is to say, this, these two parts. And then the middle section has a maximum value of negative 1 half, so y is less than or equal to negative 1 half there. So that is number 12. So the last four questions, 13, 14, uh, 15, and 16, are about composite function. Um, so let's look at 13. So we're asked to find f of g of negative 1. So in this case, we can simply start by substituting negative 1 in for g of x. So g of negative 1 would be equal to 5 times negative 1 plus 3 divided by negative 1 minus 1. So that will give us negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. From there, then g of negative 1 simplifies to just 1. So we're just looking for f of 1 to complete the question. So that would be, of course, uh, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 2, so that would just be 1. So that is to say, f of g of negative 1 is simply equal to 1. Okay, what about g of f of 2? So we'll start with f of 2. So that will be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 2. And that will be 4 plus 4 minus 2, which is 6. So from there, we are looking for g of 6. So that will be 5 times 6 plus 3 divided by um, 6 minus 1. So that will be 33 in the numerator. 
and then 5 for the denominator. So that would be simplified to 33 over 5. Okay, so that's the first step, is to evaluate composite functions for specific values of x. Number 14, so this time we are going to find composite functions algebraically, and so we're going to have new functions at the end. So in this first case, f of g of x, so we are going to replace all instances of x in the function f of x with what g of x is. So that boils down to 3. And then instead of writing x here, we'll write the entirety of g of x, which of course is 3x squared minus 3. And then outside the parentheses, we'll have minus 2. So this simplifies to 9x squared minus 9 minus 2, which can be further simplified to 9x squared minus 11. All right, next one, f of f of x. So we have 3 and then 3x minus 2 and then minus 2 outside of the parentheses. So this will be 9x minus 6 minus 2. So that simplifies to just 9x minus 8. Okay, let's move on to number 15. Okay, so we're given f of x is equal to the square root of x and g of x is equal to 3x squared plus 9x. Uh, we are to determine f of g of x and then state the domain only. Okay, so if we just combine the two, then f of g of x would be equal to the square root of 3x squared plus 9x. And there is no real good way of simplifying this expression. So all we need to do now is to find a domain. So of course, since 3x squared plus 9x is underneath a square root sign, it must be greater than or equal to 0. So we can divide both sides by 3 in this case. So we have x squared plus 3x is greater than or equal to 0. We can factor out x in the on the left-hand side, so we have x times x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, which means either x is greater than or equal to 0, or x is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, number 16. So g of f of x this time, so g of f of x would be one over and then the square root of x plus three and then minus five. So looks like this. Okay. And again, there's not much simplifying to be done here, so the only thing left to do is to find a domain. So there's two things to consider. First of all, the denominator cannot be equal to 0, so we know that the square root of x plus 3 minus 5 cannot be equal to 0. Like so. which means uh, square root of x plus 3 cannot be equal to 5. Which means that x plus 3 cannot be equal to 25. And so x cannot be equal to 22. Okay, so that's one restriction. The second restriction is that 
the square root of x plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. Which means, well, x plus 3. Right, so, sorry about that. Uh, meant that since x plus 3 is underneath a square root sign, it must be greater than or equal to 0. So let's just go ahead and uh, fix that. So it's just x plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0, which means simply that x must be greater than or equal to negative 3. So these two restrictions combined means that x must be greater than or equal to negative 3, but it cannot be 22. So the domain is actually those two components combined together. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's it for the practice test. Once again, thank you for listening.